What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do dependent drop down boxes for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at dependent drop down boxes. So dependent drop down boxes, one drop down is dependent on the other. So if we click male here, we get a new list here, John West Dano. If we click female, we get a different list, April Steph Beth. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So this is just our basic PyQt5 starter code that we've been using. We learned how to do this in the last video, so check the playlist if you haven't seen that. And what we need to do now is open the designer and build out the GUI. So I'm in my C PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's just open the designer. And when we do, this thing pops up. And let's create a new main window. And let me just sort of resize this stuff a little bit. And it doesn't really matter what this looks like. I'm going to come down here and grab a combo box. So here it is down here in input widgets right there. And we've looked at combo boxes in other videos. So check the playlist if you haven't seen those. So I'm going to make this really big so that it's nice and easy to see. And let's grab a second one, put it right there, get roughly the same size, something like that. There we go. And let's just put these guys side by side. Whatever. Make this a little bigger. Okay, so then I want to change the font in these. So let me come over here and let's come down here and change the font to 16. So the text inside of these will be bigger. And you'll notice there's no text in them yet. We're gonna put that in programmatically. And then finally, let's grab a label and then just sort of stick it down here just so that we have something to kind of output on the screen. And I could say you picked and then something. And same thing here, let me change the font size of this to 16 so it's bigger, easier to read. Okay, so good enough. We've just got a really basic GUI here and we're good to go. So let's come up here and go file, save as. And I'm going to save this in my C PyQt5 directory. And let's just call this DC for dependent combo box. So, okay, go ahead and do that. Now, normally we would convert that to a Python file, but in the last video, I showed you how to just import that file. So let's head over to our code and just do that. And in fact, you can see I've already done this. We've got our load UI thing right here. We've got it set to DC.UI, so we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and save this and run this. Head back over to our terminal and let's run Python DC.py. And when we do, we get our basic app here. And it doesn't actually do anything yet, but it looks okay. So, all right, let's head back over to our code and actually add stuff to the drop down box. So, to do that, we need to first define our widgets and we need to import them. So, if we actually open up our UI file, we can go open file, come down here to dc.ui. You can see we have a Q combo box. So, we need to import that. So, let me just copy that up here. And we also have a label. So, let's come down here and find that. That's just Q label, so I can copy that as well. And we import that up here. And then let's come down here and define our widgets. And let's call our first combo box self.combo1. And that's going to be equal to something. Then we've got self.combo2, let's say. And let's call our label self.label and set that equal to something. So here what we want to do is find the child in our UI file. So we can go self.findChild. And then we want to pass in something and something. So let me just copy all of this. And here we need to define what the actual widget is. So if we head back over to our UI file and head up to the top here, it's a combo box. So I can copy this and that will go there and there. And here we need to name the actual combo box. So here the name is combo box. So we can copy that. And the second one is going to be named combo box two. So we can copy that. There we go. And now we need to do the same thing for the label. So let's just come down here and find the label. Where did it go? Here it is, Q label. So we could pop that in here and the name of our Q label is just label. Okay, so we've now defined our widgets. Now let's add items to the combo box, right? So we just go self.combo1.add item. And here we can say male. And if we want to do it a second time, we can have the we can have another thing say female. All right. So let's go ahead and save this. 
head over to the terminal and let's run python dc.py to see how that looks. But before we do that, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Whoa, weird commercial. All right, so let's run this thing. And when we do, we get this, we can click on it, it says male, female, good to go. Now nothing happens yet when we click on these things, but we're starting to get there. So, okay, let's close this, head back over to our code. Now we wanna add items to the second dropdown box. How do we do that? Well, we added an item here, male and female, but we can actually add more stuff. We can add data. And to do that, we just slap in a comma and then pass in a Python list. So for males, we can say we want John, we want Wes, and we want Dan. For females, we want maybe, let's say, April. We want Steph, and we want Beth. Okay, so now if we save this and run it, you'll notice nothing has happened, nothing has changed. It still just says male and female here, and if we click on one of them, nothing happens in this box at all. We need to actually add that stuff to that second box whenever we click on this. So we can do that pretty easy. Let's head over here. And underneath here, let's say, click the first dropdown or whatever. And we can call self.combo1.activated.connect. And this will fire whenever we click the combo box, something in the combo box. And what do we want to happen whenever we do that? Well, let's run a function called self.clicker. And we haven't actually created that yet. So let's come down here and do that. So outside of here, let's define clicker. And we want to pass in self as usual, but we also want to pass in index. And what is that? Well, we're dealing with lists here. And you know, a list starts at zero. So John is zero, Wes is one, and Dan is two, zero, one, two. Well, likewise, these two things are sort of now indexed. They are the index of the combo box. So male is the zeroth index number, female is the first, zero, one. So we want to pass that index and then do something appropriately. So the first thing we want to do is clear the second box. So if we clicked on it previously and we put stuff in it, April, Steph, Beth, and we click it again and we click male, and then we want John whatever to show up, we want the females to disappear first. We want to clear those first. So let's go self.combo2.clear. And now let's do the dependent thing. I spell dependent? I don't know do the dependent thing. So how do we do that? Well, we just call self.combo2.addItems, and that's just like up here, but instead of adding one thing, add item, we're adding multiple things because we've got a list here, right? So we can call add items. And what do we wanna put in there for the items? Well, we wanna put self.combo1.itemData, right? So that's the data, and we wanna pass in the index that we talked about. So that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that works. So Python dc.py, pull this over. So here, let's click female, boom, the girls show up. So if we then click male, boom, the guys show up. And you notice the girls were cleared when we click this. Now here, it'll be female, and the males were cleared because we cleared that box, right? And that's cool. So now if we click on one of these, nothing actually happens. Well, that's super easy. We can fix that. Head back over to our code. And let's come down here and let's create another function I'm just going to call it clicker2. And here, all we need to do is pass in self. And then up here, let's grab this guy and do it again. So here, if we click the second, let's change this to click the drop down box. So here, instead of running clicker, we want to run clicker2. So piece of cake. So here, what do we want to happen when we click that second box? Well, let's just have the label update to something. So we could do that. We could go self.label.setText. We've done this lots of times in other videos. Let's just create an F string. And let's say you picked what? Well, let's create a variable. And here we could just pass in self.combo2.currentText. And that'll do. And if we want to do a hyphen and do another one with self.combo1.currentText, we could do that as well. Uh, but that should do the trick. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this, run it one more time, make sure that worked. So here we can click female, say we want to click Steph. Uh-oh, we must have a typo somewhere. Let's see, what did we do here? Ah, 
Here we go. This needs a guy right there. There we go. We just had a little typo there. All right, so now this should work. Come back over here, clear the screen, run this guy again. Bring it over here, female, boom, April. So like, we, you pick Beth, she's a female. We can come up here, change it to male, say John, you pick John male, or Wes, or Dan, or we can switch back, go April, Steph, Beth, and that works. So super easy to do dependent drop down boxes, really, the only tricky thing was this list right here that we added in, and then we can reference that, that list just by calling the item data, because that's what this stuff is. It's data that we've added to our you know, drop down box or whatever, and that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codingme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships, they pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.